The truth is, we must reduce chronic stressors to improve longevity. Multiple studies have demonstrated that people who are happy and healthy are not only nicer, <laughs> but their biological age is slowing down. Hello fellow lifestyle enthusiasts and welcome back to another video for improving your health, your wellness, and your lifestyle. And if you're new, I'm Lene, and I help overwhelmed and possibly a little out of shape folks to supercharge your health and to simplify your lifestyle so that you can live and love your best life. If you're interested in videos that inspire simpler and healthier living, then click that subscribe button and the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my best tips and tricks to live your best life. In today's video, I want to discuss the effects of stress on the aging process. As a physician who specializes in aging well practices and hormone balance and weight loss, I get asked questions about the aging process really on a daily basis. wondered why presidential candidates appear fresh and vibrant in their campaigns and after their four-year term in presidency look haggard, gray-haired, wrinkled, and a lot older? Maybe you've had feelings lately that your body feels older than you would like. Well, I know what this is like because in fact if you caught my stroke story in the <laughs> video that uh, I linked for you earlier, you know I was on the verge of aging much more rapidly than I wanted to before I was even 40. Here is the thing. We used to believe that the disease processes we see in the elderly were normal processes of aging. However, with the emerging science of epigenetics or the study of environmental influences on gene expression, we know that the stress can really influence our biological age more than actual genes. Believe it or not, stress hormones have a major role in determining your genetic expression. A primary example is the fun stress hormone that we call cortisol. And cortisol with adrenaline are your fight or flight hormones that get you prepared for action. These were meant only to be emergency chemicals. However, in modern life, for most individuals, these chemicals really are turned on most of the time. The thing with chronic elevated cortisol is that it's a catabolic hormone and it breaks down proteins into amino acids. For these amino acids, your body goes through a process called deamination, which really is the breakdown of amino acids into ammonia, carbon skeletons, and hydrogen ions. Now, the carbon skeletons form carbohydrates and glucose. This is a biochemical process known as gluconeogenesis. Essentially, gluconeogenesis is the process that the body uses to convert amino acids or proteins into sugar molecules. In other words, the body breaks itself down in times of stress for fuel. So what about our lovely before and afters of presidential terms? <laughs> well, Guess what collagen and underlying structures of the skin are made of? Yep, amino acids. So we know that stress breaks down precious amino acids and speeds up the physical aging process, but it also speeds up the rate at which you age biologically. Here's where we get into epigenetics and how stress can really affect your overall health. Stress can create an inflammatory response that destroys the telomeres on your chromosomes. Telomeres 
are the shoelace-like caps at the end of your chromosomes that ultimately determine the longevity of the cell. Each time the cells divide, the telomere lengths get shorter and shorter until eventually the cell dies. An enzyme called telomerase helps to increase the length of telomeres, so this is an important enzyme that's being researched right now because the length of your telomeres predicts your true biological age. Any disease associated with aging is related to telomere length. Therefore, in the case of telomeres, size really does matter. People with shorter telomeres get sick more often. Chronic stress shortens telomeres early. Longer telomeres protect from cardiovascular disease, dementia, and other age-related diseases. But you don't want telomeres to be too long, as cells that don't divide properly are at risk for becoming cancerous. With telomere length, we want the Goldilocks size. Large, but not too large, just right. Hormesis is the Goldilocks level of an optimal amount of stress on cellular activity. Too little and your cells do suffer, too much and your cells degenerate faster. Perfectly stressing of the organism really is key. However, chronic inflammation from overstressed cells, think intense regular exercise, environmental toxicity, poor dietary habits, toxic relationships, these can all create degenerative cascades. In fact, the repercussions of toxic levels of stress can have serious deleterious effects on every system in your body. We now can determine true biological age and telomere length through flow fish cytometry. If you don't have access to this test because it is several hundred dollars, how can you determine your actual biological age? Well, you can test such things as bone density, inflammatory markers in your blood, cognitive tests, speed tests, coronary calcium scores, body fat and lean muscle mass, endocrine function, especially levels of DHEA, and, and other things, but really telomere testing is the best method for really determining your biological age. So are we all doomed to age quickly under the pressures of chronic stress? Well, yes and no. The consequences will occur if you do nothing. The truth is, we must reduce chronic stressors to improve longevity. Multiple studies have demonstrated that people who are happy and healthy are not only nicer, <laughs> but their biological age is slowing down. We know from research that people that are socially disadvantaged have histories of adversity and trauma, have shorter telomere length. Unpublished studies and newer research demonstrate that prenatal stress is creating shorter telomere length in the cord blood. So please, be extra nice to pregnant women, people. <laughs> Dr. Alyssa Eppel, professor at UCSF, wrote the book The Telomere Effect in which she discusses these studies in much greater detail. So I encourage you, if you are interested in this cutting edge research, to check her out. As promised, I want to provide you with some simple yet effective, scientifically proven methods for improving telomerase activity and gene expression. Number one. Improve your social connection. You need a tribe that you feel connected to and supported by. 
This could be a volunteer group, a church group, a mastermind group, or even a gym class. Find your tribe and fill your days with people who lift you up and inspire you. The second thing, you want to know your mind. Pay attention to the negative thoughts that you have throughout the day. And here is where it gets really exciting. The research is showing that how you train your brain to think before you go to bed and your attitude throughout the day has a substantial effect on cellu cellular mitochondrial function and how you think improves the enzymatic activity of telomerase, which in essence creates longer telomeres, which in essence improves longevity. Simply thinking of three things that you're grateful for before you hit the pillow and monitoring your self-talk throughout the day is all that it takes. The best tool for changing your mindset is to use affirmations and visualizations. You may need some help in changing your current mental comfort zones from average to extraordinary. I have an entire video to help you get started on this and I will link it here for you. I'll also put all these videos in the description box down below. The third thing is effective exercise. Exercise is important, but not too much. The body is constantly searching for avoidance of a threatened state. So in your workouts, this translates to keeping high intensity interval training to a minimum, like 10 to 15 minutes. The rest of your weekly exercise should not be too vigorous. If you are feeling tired after your workout, you probably overdid it. If you need help creating the ideal exercise routine for getting in your best shape with minimum effort, don't worry, I've got you. You can check out my video here to help you find your minimum effective dose. I'll bet you're a little like me. You thought that this video provided some interesting material, but you're really not sure where to start and how much you'll actually have to do. There are two types of people. Those who hear information and move on without any action at all, and those who actually act upon good advice. So do me a favor. Just pick one area that you know you'll need help, like social activity or reprogramming your mind or improving your exercise habits. And then pick just one thing to do this month as your monthly challenge. Maybe you'll choose to join a volunteer group or to join a dance class. Whatever you choose, just imagine your life with less stress, improved health, better relationships, and higher returns in the happiness department. The good news is that I have some resources to help you to get started. If you need a community to join, head on over to Journey Towards Joy, the Facebook group. If you need help with your mindset though, check out my link down below and of course, I've got you covered in the diet and the fitness department. <laughs> I cover diet that is most recommended for improving gene expression, simple workouts, daily detoxification, all in my book, The Forever Fat Burner. So grab a free copy of it down in the link below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you know of anyone who is on this journey of anti-aging or they just wanna improve their health overall, then do me a favor and share this video with them. And down below in the comments, I would love to hear what one thing this month you're gonna to try to improve your longevity and vitality. So as always, take care my friend. Mwah. Until next time.